This is a tutorial on solving exponential and logarithmic functions. The easiest way to solve exponential and logarithmic functions is to use the one-to-one -one property, if you can. Because logarithms and exponential functions are one-to-one -one functions, the one-to-one -one property tells us that if we take the log that with the same base of both sides of our equation, then whatever's inside the log has to be equal. So, if the log with some base b of some value m is equal to the log of some base b of some value n, well I'm taking the same log of both sides, so m has to be equal to n if the logs are going to be equal. So if I have the log base 3 of x squared minus 3x is equal to the log base 3 of 4x minus 10, that means that x squared minus 3x is equal to 4x minus 10. Now this is just a quadratic equation, I can solve that. I just subtract 4x from both sides, and I add 10 to both sides. And I'll get x squared minus 7x plus 10 is equal to 0. Now I can factor this quadratic, this is x minus 5 times x minus 2, and that's equal to 0. And that means that x is equal to 5, or x is equal to 2. Now if you ever get more than one value for x as a possible solution to a logarithmic problem, it's always best to go back and check your answers by plugging them back in. Because remember, you can only take the log of positive numbers. You cannot take the log of 0 or a negative number. If I plug in 5, the numbers, or x squared minus 3x, will give us a positive value. If I plug into 5 for x, in 4x minus 10, I'll get a positive value. If I plug in x is equal to 2 into x squared minus 3x, this is the log base 3 of negative 2. And you cannot take the log of a negative number, which means x is equaling to 2 is an extraneous solution. And our only real solution is x is equal to 5. So if you're taking the same log of both sides of your equation, then whatever's inside the logs can be set equal, or you can just drop the logs and then solve for x. Now the same thing works for exponential equations. If I have 2 to some power, I'll call it a, and that's supposed to be equal to 2 to some other power, b, well I'm raising 2 by some power and 2 by some power, and if these numbers are going to be equal, then a has to be equal to b. So I can use the one-to-one -one property here to solve 2 to the x minus 12 power, which is equal to 2 cubed times 4 to the x power. Now remember, to use one-to-one -one properties for exponents, my bases have to be the same. So I'm going to have to do some rearranging of this right-hand side so it looks like the left-hand side. I'm going to start with this 4 to the x power. 4 to the x power, I'm going to rewrite as 2 squared and then to the x power. Now if you have a power to a power, you can multiply your powers or your exponents. So this is 2 to the 2x power. Now we're still multiplying this by 2 cubed. And when you have two numbers with the same base, you can add their exponents. So this is 2 to the 2x plus 3 power. So I've just rearranged my right-hand side. Now I have 2 to the x minus 12 power, and that's equal to 2 to the 2x plus 3 power. Well, my bases are the same, so I can just drop them, and I can say x minus 12 is equal to 2x plus 3. Subtract x from both sides, subtract 3 from both sides, and we'll get x is equal to negative 15. So that's how you use the 1 to 1 power to solve for variables that are in exponents or inside logarithms. Now what if we couldn't use the one-to-one -one power? Here I have the log base 2 of 2x is equal to 3. I'm not taking the log of both sides of this equation, so I can't use the one-to-one -one property to solve this. But I still have my variable inside of a log. And if I want to solve for this variable, I have to get it out. Well, the easiest way to get a variable out of a logarithm is to rewrite this logarithm as an exponential equation. Remember, if you have y is equal to the log of some base b of 
some variable we'll call x, I can rewrite this as an exponential. I keep my base, b, put it to the y power, and that's equal to x. These two expressions mean exactly the same thing. So if I want to get this x out of my logarithm, I'm going to rewrite this equation as an exponential. I keep my base b, which in this case is 2. I put it to my y power, y in this case is 3, so I have 2 cubed is equal to whatever is inside my logarithm, which in this case is 2x. So I have 2x is equal to 2 cubed. 2 cubed is 8, so this is 8 is equal to 2x. Divide both sides by 2, and you'll get x is equal to 4. So if you ever have a variable inside a logarithm, one way of getting it out is to rewrite this logarithm as an exponential. Now what if we have a much harder problem? Here we have several log terms in this equation, and then we also have this 8 out here at the end that keeps us from using the one-to-one -one property. Well, if you want to solve this for x, the first step is to get all of the log terms on the same side of the equal sign. So I'm going to have to subtract the natural log of x from both sides. If I do this, I will end up with the natural log of x squared plus x plus the natural log of x minus 1 minus the natural log of x is equal to 8. Now that I have all of my natural logs or all of my log terms on the same side of the equal sign, I'm going to combine these into one log using log properties. My first two logs, the natural log of x squared plus x and the natural log of x minus 1, I can combine because they're added together and I can use the product property and make this the natural log of x squared plus x times x minus 1. This is still having the natural log of x subtracted and it's still equal to 8. Now inside this log, if I want to multiply these two terms together, I have x squared times x, that's x cubed. x squared times negative 1, that's negative x squared. I have x times x, that's a positive x squared, and x times negative 1, that's a negative x. My negative x squared and positive x squared will cancel, and I'll be left with the natural log of x cubed minus x. And we're still subtracting the natural log of x, and that's still equal to 8. Now these two leftover logs on my left hand side, they're being subtracted so I can use the quotient property to combine them. This is the same as the natural log of x cubed minus x all over x. And that's equal to 8. Now if I divide x cubed minus x by x, one of my x's will cancel from here and the other x will cancel from here and I'll be left with 1. So what I have is the natural log of x squared minus 1 is equal to 8. Now I have this down to one log equal to some number. So now I'm going to solve this just like I solved the previous example. To get this x out of my logarithm, I'm going to rewrite this as an exponential equation. Now the natural log means that we have the log base e. So if I rewrite this as an exponential, this is going to be e to the eighth power is equal to x squared minus 1. If I add 1 to both sides, I'll end up with x squared is equal to e to the eighth power plus 1. Then if I want to solve this for x, I take the square root of both sides, and I'll get x is equal to plus or minus the square root of e to the eighth power plus 1. Now the square root of e to the eighth plus 1, that's about 55. If I take the positive and negative versions of this, well, if I take the negative version of it, negative 55 plugged in to the second and third logarithm in our equation here will get us the natural log of a negative number, which means we can ignore the negative version. It's an extraneous solution. Our only real solution then is x is equal to the square root of e to the eighth power plus 1. So if you're ever presented with an equation with multiple log terms in it, especially if they're all the same base, bring them all to one side of the equation 
and use log properties to combine them into one log, which you can rewrite as an exponential to get your variable out of the log expression. So now let's try solving some exponential equations. Here we have 10 times e to the 4x minus 12 is equal to 88. Now, because I have a base of e, this is not going to be easy to take the one-to-one -one property or to use the one-to-one -one property. So instead, I'm going to make sure that I get all the exponential terms alone on one side of the equal sign. So first, I'm going to add 12. If I do that, I'll have 10 times e to the 4x is equal to 100. Divide both sides by 10, and I have e to the 4x is equal to 10. Now my variable is still in my exponent. If I want to solve for x, I have to get the variable out of my exponent, and the easiest way to do that is to rewrite this exponential equation as a logarithm. If I have y is equal to some base b to the x power, then I can write this as the log with the same base b of y is equal to x. Since my base is e, I can say that this is the natural log of 10 is equal to 4x. Divide both sides by 4, and I get x is equal to the natural log of 10 over 4. So if you ever need to f solve an exponential equation with a variable in that exponent, the easiest way to get the variable out of the exponent is to rewrite your exponential equation as a logarithm. So now let's try solving an exponential equation that has multiple exponential terms in it. Here I have e to the 2x times e to the x plus 1, and that's equal to 12. Now normally I would just convert this into a log to get my variables outside of my exponent so I can solve for them, but I have 2 multiplied together. So before I can convert this to a log, I have to combine my exponents. Notice I have the same base here, base e. When you multiply two numbers together that have the same base but different exponents, you can just add the exponents. So my exponents are going to be 2x plus x plus 1. And this is 3x plus 1. So what I have here now is e to the 3x plus 1 is equal to 12. Now I'm going to convert this into a logarithm. It's going to be the log base e, so the natural log, of 12 is equal to 3x plus 1. Now if I want to solve this for x, remember natural log is just a number, so I'm going to subtract 1. I'll have 3x is equal to the natural log of 12 minus 1. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 3, and I'll get x is equal to the natural log of 12 minus 1, all divided by 3. And that would be my solution for x. So remember, if you have multiple exponential terms and they have the same base, use exponent properties to combine them into one exponent term. Then rearrange your equation with a logarithm so you pull your variable out of the exponent and solve for your variable, in this case x. So lastly, let's try solving an exponential equation that has a different base. Here I have 4 to the 3x power, and that's equal to 7 to the x minus 2 power. These are different bases, so I cannot combine these using standard exponential properties. So instead, I'm going to take the log of both sides. And I'm going to take the log base 10, or the common log. I'm going to say that the log of 4 to the 3x power is equal to the log of 7 to the x minus 2 power. I can do this because of the 1 to 1 property. If what's inside my logs are equal, then the logs must be equal. So if I have the log base 10 of 4 to the 3x power, and that's equal to the log base 10 of 7 to the x minus 2 power, I can use the power property of logarithms. I can take this 3x and I can bring it out front as a coefficient. 
Same thing with the x minus 2. So what I'm going to have here is 3x times the log of 4. And that's equal to x minus 2 times the log of 7. Next, I'm going to distribute this log of 7 inside of our parentheses. And we'll end up with 3x times the log of 4, and that's equal to x times the log of 7 minus 2 times the log of 7. I'm going to subtract x log 7 from both sides. And I'll get 3x log 4 minus x log 7 is equal to negative 2 log 7. Now on this left hand side I can factor out an x. This is x times 3 log 4 minus log 7. That's equal to negative 2 log 7. If I divide 3 log 4 minus log 7 from both sides, I'll get x is equal to negative 2 log 7 over 3 log 4 minus log 7. And that would be my solution. Now the last way we can solve an exponential or logarithmic function is to solve it by graphing. Here I have the natural log of x plus 4 plus 2, and that's equal to 2 times the log, a different base here, of 6 minus x. If I want to solve this by graphing, I'm going to say that y1 is equal to the natural log of x plus 4 plus 2. Then I'm going to say y2 is equal to 2 times the log of 6 minus x. Then I'm going to graph each of these individually. First I'm going to graph y is equal to the natural log of x plus 4 and then plus 2. And that would look something like this. Next, I'm going to graph y is equal to 2 times the log of 6 minus x. And this graph would look something like this. Where these graphs intersect is the solution to this equation. This x value provides us the same y values. So if these y values are the same, well then this equation makes sense. So this x value appears to be approximately negative 3.1. So where our graphs intersect should give us the answer to our equation. And that completes the tutorial on solving exponential and logarithmic functions.